one important thing is only people that objected on council level will be able to object to VCAD. Because make, make, there's no doubt this thing will go to VCAD. Either McDonald's will take it, and if they're successful at council level, then we will take it. And that credit gets really hard. So before I have on for too long, um, please welcome James Molino, who will say a couple of words. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole, and it's, it's great to see another large crowd here today. I wasn't going to speak, but I just wanted to, um, I guess, give some encouragement to the campaign. Um, and it's, as you know, coming to a head, so Council will be considering the application at the end of this month or early October. Um, to bring up to speed with what I've been doing, um, I guess I'm in a bit more of a fortunate position than Councillor Samantha Dunn. Uh, Council laws can't publicly express their personal opinion. Um, it's their job to do that once they've looked at the pros and cons and then on the night that Council deliberates that, um, Councillor Dunn and her eight other colleagues will express a view and, and, uh, and vote on that view. Um, I'm in a more fortunate position as your State Member of Parliament to uh, be able to express my view and, and that is that I'm very much opposed to the development of a McDonald's um, to give you a little bit of an update, uh, we have received over 500 objections so far at Council, which is a phenomenal effort in terms of a campaign. Uh, what I will say is um, a number of those objections fail to have names and addresses on them. So if you're talking to your neighbours and talking to people you know about this particular issue and you're going to object, please make sure that you put your name and address on your objection. Um, it's required under the Planning and Environment Act and your objection will not be considered if we can't identify that you are in fact a real person living at a real address. So unfortunately that's just the bureaucracy that goes um, with, with objections. Now in terms of uh, following on from James and what he said, Council um, the planning, planning is the only legislative framework we have to consider this application. So that's why it's incredibly important that your objections actually talk about planning matters. Um, I just wanted to list possible five sort of key points that you may want to consider when you put your letter of objection. Um, the first one was the driveway entry and exit of Burwood Highway, which is the existing driveway at Cookie Haven. Um, the Australian standards for driveways talk about you need to be <coughs> about 120 metres clear sight distance so that you can see cars coming in either ex direction when you're trying to exit. I would say most people will probably say that's fairly questionable and if you imagine at peak hour, obviously there's a massive queue um, on Burwood Highway there and to try and get visibility to see all the way back to the primary school um, is pretty difficult. The other issue, the second issue was car parking. They proposed a car park of 28 seats, but that's actually only based on the internal seats in the restaurant. There's 56 seats inside the restaurant, but actually there's about 90 seats in the whole plan. Um, so you could say that the, the application at the moment isn't really complete because it hasn't looked at the full 90 seats that are actually in the development. The third one is the design. Um, Australian standards say that a car park area should actually have a maximum gradient of 1 in 16, which is about 6.5%. And they're proposing at the moment just to keep the existing car park. And the grade of the existing car park is actually about close to 10%. So it doesn't meet an Australian standard. So just in summary, five points I've just outlined were Burwood Highway Driveway is, 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 has poor sight distance, it's not great. Uh, the parking assessment is incomplete. Um, the car park design does not meet Australian standards. The drive-through design is very poor. And the directional split of traffic may not be considered to be valid. So they're the sort of things you can say. So I hope that helps. If you want to find the email addresses of councillors, which is what the question is, if you go to the Shire of Power Rangers website, look up your councillors, all our email addresses are there. They're a standard format. Mine is s.dunn at yarrarangers.vic.gov.au. We're all a standard format and they'll go directly into our inboxes. Thanks all again for coming and I hope that you all have lots of
gesture of protections or will do so too. 